at number five, we have the villa. The villa are Eastern Europe's nymphs or mountain fairies who can be found living in hills and mountains. Some versions of folklore claim that the villa live up in the clouds, but throughout history, these creatures are almost always spotted in the wilderness in all versions of folklore. These mysterious creatures are believed to have power over the wind, and they are credited with causing windstorms that can wreak havoc on the surrounding communities and urban structures. Those who claim to have seen the villa say that they appear as beautiful women who sparkle in dresses made of leaves and flowers, while others claim they are ghost-like creatures wrapped in long cloaks or rich blue robes. Unlike many of the creepy creatures who haunt the forests and homes of Eastern Europe, the villa are beautiful and feminine, but don't let their appearance fool you. While many believe they are helpful creatures, many people throughout Europe claim they are destructive and use their appearance for their gain. They are known to tempt men to dance with them, then rob and kill them, and then hide their bodies in the clouds or throughout the dense wilderness. These demons are incredibly strong and powerful and are known to end the lives of men who defy them or break promises. You will know that you are in the territory of the villa if you see deep rings in the grass. This is the sign that the villa has danced in one spot. It is said that treading on the rings will bring bad luck, so avoid them at all costs if you ever discover them in the woods. If you're planning a trip to the Eastern European area, I would definitely avoid camping or anything to do with the woods, due to many demons living and lurking in the forests around Europe. Many locals like to leave peace offerings for these demons. Things like ribbons, fruit, cake, flowers and vegetables are often left on the hills where lighting is known to strike. When locals want to venture into the woods, they hope that these peace offerings will bring them luck and keep them safe from the villas. In at number 4 we have Nekalave. The Nekalave is a horse-like demon from Arcadian mythology that combines equine and human elements, originating from the Orkney Islands in the Northern Isles of Scotland. Also as the origins in North mythology and British folklorist Catherine Briggs called it the nastiest of all the demons of Scotland's Northern Isles. This demon's breath was thought to wilt crops and sicken livestock, and the creature was held responsible for droughts and epidemics on lands even though it's predominantly a sea dweller. This demon could cause mass destructions for the locals across land and sea, which is why many believe it to be the most terrifying of all the demons throughout Europe. A graphic description of the Nukalave as it appears on land was given by an islander who claimed to have come in contact with the demon, but many accounts describe the details of the creature's appearance as inconsistent. Many believe they have many similarities to other sea monsters. This demonic creature is destructive to many humans and the environment, but it's believed throughout the summer months it is kept combined by the Mitha of the Sea, an ancient Orcadian spirit, who is the only one that can control the Nekalave. Orcadian folklore has a strong Scandinavian influence, and it may be that the Nekalave is a composite of a water horse from Celtic mythology and a creature imported by the Norsemen. As with malevolent entities such as the Kelpie, it possibly offered an explanation for incidents that islanders in ancient times could not otherwise understand. This demon has terrorized the sea and land throughout Europe for centuries, and according to Orkney resident and folklorist Walter Trail Dennison, Nekalave means the devil of the sea. Many people think this demon is only able to thrive in the waters, but can in fact roam the land for some time. According to an encounter with this demon, on land it appears to have the torso of a man, which is attached to a horse's back. It has no legs, but large arms that can reach the ground. When it's back in the water, it is unknown what it looks like specifically, but it resembles a large, hideous sea creature. Number 3. Strange Things in Montana Montana is sometimes called the treasure state. All the gold and silver that have been uncovered there. And also for lesser reasons, for all the wild cryptid stories that come out of it. For seekers of the supernatural, Montana is a treasure trove, a real treasure state. Now, Deer Lodge is a city in Montana, and it's purported to be a hotbed of supernatural occurrences. Rumored to be home to creatures that defy classification and scientific convention and avoid the trail camps. Until recently, a local rancher from Deer Lodge caught something bizarre on his land when something tripped the motion sensor on his trail camera. Now, the black and white footage shows a blindingly bright, glowing humanoid with what looks like an oversized and oblong head walking bizarrely in front of the camera. My first thought is that Simpsons episode has Mulder and Scully guest starring. The Simpsons episode with Mulder and Scully, where Mr. Burns is glowing green through the woods. That's what I'm thinking of when I see this. Now, this trail cam was miles away from any roads or trails so there shouldn't be anybody creeping around. 
but there is. The rancher returned to the site of the photo and stood in the same spot and tried to mimic the composition of what he saw. When he posed himself against and compared the other image, he came out looking pretty human. Compared to the sort of odd alien proportions of the glowing being, which also happened to be devoid of any features. So what was it? Now some believe it to be extraterrestrial life popular. The show Ancient Aliens, the most reputable name in alien news, took the trail camera footage to analyze for authentication. No alterations, manipulations, inconsistencies were discovered of any kind. Well, I don't know what's going on in there. Others wondered if perhaps the creature could be a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch or maybe even some other manner of currently undiscovered or unknown cryptid we don't even know about. This could be a first contact scenario. So what do you think was caught on this trail cam? An alien? A Sasquatch? Something dreadfully normal? We may never know, but it's fun to theorize. Number two. The Sadako Trampoline. Have you ever seen The Ring? Or perhaps the original, Ringu? Probably not, because if you saw The Ring, you would have died roughly seven days after that, and then you wouldn't be able to watch all of these lovely videos on Top 5 Scary, and I'd miss you too much. The Japanese original is one of my favorite horror movies ever, which you probably notice if you watch this channel a lot, because I crowbar references in to Sadako roughly three times a week in these videos. Not my fault, she's the definitive ghost girl, lover in Dead by Daylight, big fan of her. I I can't think of many things I've seen in my life half as creepy as that image of Sadako stretching herself out of the TV into the real world, the greasy long stringy black hair over her pallid face. Oh, Well exactly for what happens in this next clip which is just as terrifying. Take a look. At first it seems like someone filming some summer fun until you get a better look at what appears to be a figure clad all in white crawling out from under the trampoline looking a lot like Sadako crawling out of that TV. Definitely has me scratching my head watching over again. Now, not everyone is as convinced as your easily convinced Crypt Keeper. One commenter on the video attempted to debunk it as a fake, lending a little bit of insight as a video editor. They said, I'll guess that the ghost figure is a clip of someone standing up, which has been motion tracked and composited in with blurring and opacity. If the shot was stabilized, like I'm guessing it was, this would be fairly straightforward and easy. The camera shape could be added in digitally after the motion tracking is done to really sell the shot. I noticed the blur on what looks like the ghost's back as it stands up, and the jumper's leg passes over the figure, and this blur is whipped away. The clip stops as the figure is moving above the black netting, which is being used to conceal any editing artifacts. Well, okay, so it sounds like they know a lot about video editing, infinitely more than I do, and that's all well and reasonable, but could also be a ghost. Who's faking ghost videos? That's too much time in the day to be faking ghost videos. Number one, the Jersey Devil. The infamous Jersey Devil is said to haunt the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. There are a ton of spins and variations on its origins, and if you're really curious, search Jersey Devil on our channel, nobody else's, okay? Don't need anybody else taking all those views. There's tons and tons of stories about it, but one of the most famous variations is that at a place called Leeds Point, during a thunderstorm in 1735, a Quaker woman gave birth. As the room flickered with light, the wind howled, and the poor mother who'd already raised 12 infants gave birth to the 13th. Now, some say the 13th was cursed by the devil. Some say she cursed it herself. But the story goes that this 13th child would not emerge normal, but with winged shoulders, a horse's head, cloven feet, and a wretched tail. It would soar out into the night, casting itself in the annals of folklore as the Jersey Devil. Now, over the years, there have been tons of sightings of the alleged Jersey Devil. At one point during the early 20th century, sightings would get posted in the hundreds in local newspapers. Now, our local newspapers don't reference cryptids as much as they used to. I'd like us to get back to that. But what we do have is TikTok capturing it, the modern day newspaper. Take a look at this wild footage that has been going viral across TikTok and Instagram. We see the horrific creature perched, and yeah, I'm not in the business of patronizing you. This is a CGI creature. It's impressively rendered, and they did a good job editing into the scene, but that background is in Jersey, for starters. The problem is they made this look too good. The creature is too well modeled and animated in a broad daylight setting. You know, a really good cryptid fake would have had the camera a lot grainier and blurrier and I purposely, I, I personally would have said it somewhere a little more rural, a little more farmlandy, foresty, but it's entertaining nonetheless, right? 
Number five on this list is Der Grossman. This demon is very similar to Slenderman and is just as dangerous. Slenderman Wiki says, It is a supposed mythical creature associated with woodcuts carved by an unknown artist in the 16th century Germany. Said woodcuts portrayed it as a tall, disfigured man with white spheres where his eyes should be, similar in appearance to the Slenderman. Der Grossman was commonly described as a fairy of the Black Forest who abducted bad children that entered the forest at night and would stalk them until they confessed their wrongdoings to a parent. The appearance of this demonic creature makes people believe that it could be related to Slenderman in some fashion, like a dark and twisted cousin or something like that. However, it seems as if Der Grossman is only native to Germany, or at least the forests there are the only ones where reported sightings have been. Be very careful if you end up walking around in a German forest by yourself. Number four on this list is the Werewolf of Moorbach. Just that name, the Werewolf of Moorbach, sounds super menacing, like a scary creature out of Lord of the Rings or something like that. This is no fantasy fiction though, this is a real legend. Europe Diary says, A soldier running away from the Russian army with some other deserters stopped at Whitlich on his way to Alsace, his home. They wanted to grab some requirements from a farmhouse they spotted, but ended up killing the farmer and his sons on getting caught. The farmer's wife is said to have cursed the soldier so he would turn into a beast every full moon. Eventually, the news spread of a violent beast and the folks of Moorbach were successful in killing him later. A candle burnt always at the spot where he was buried as a reminder and warning. However, one night in 1988, the candle went out and the officers at the US Air Base at Moorbach apparently saw a huge wolf-like figure within the parameter. A chase followed but the military dogs were not successful in combating the creature. The candle was re lit after the incident and the story was recounted numerous times since then. Now how much of it was true and how much of it was imagined? It might as well have been the imagination of the three security officers at the airbase, probably bored or in need to tell a new story. But then again, some of the other officers apparently years later insisted that what they saw was true. This is the big story that everybody always thinks about when referring to the Moorbach werewolf, but there have been other sightings since this incident as well. People have even found the carcasses of dead animals that have been absolutely ravaged lying in the forest. Now, these animal carcasses could have just as easily been caused by an actual wolf or a bear or something, but considering the frequent sightings of this werewolf, it's fair to wonder. The candle apparently still burns at Moorbach, and while it's lit, the people believe that we should still be protected. But if it ever does go out, then be very careful of the Moorbach werewolf. In a number three, Kostchi. Kostchi is often given the nickname of the immortal or the deathless and comes from popular Russian folklore. The story goes that a spell is cast on a man which prevents him from being killed. He hides his soul inside nested objects to protect it. The origin of this demon is unknown but contains elements from the 12th century pagan leader Khan Konchak who is recorded in the Tales of Igor's campaign. Over time, a balanced view of the non-Christian human Khan who dates back to the 12th century but may have been slightly distorted by Christian Slavic writers. By the 18th century and likely earlier, the legend of this demon had been appearing in Slavic tales. This demon has the ability to cast sleep spells on their foes and can only be broken by playing on Enchanted Gusli. Depending on the tale, he has different characteristics. He may ride a three or seven legged horse, may have tusks or fangs, or may possess a variety of different magic objects like cloaks and rings. It is positive though that this demon possesses many magic powers, making humans frightened of coming in contact with this demon. The humans who are the most scared of this demon are young women because he tends to menace women with his magical powers. There are various versions of the Kostchi demon and have been made into terrifying fairy tales all over the world in places like Greece, Albania, Croatia, Serbia, Hungary and Lithuania. Many people who are soon to be wed are terrified that their soon to be wives will be taken or killed by Kostchi, so many of them stay hidden with their beloved until their wedding day to ensure the safety of their soon to be wives. Many stay away from Europe for their weddings and honeymoons because of this demon to ensure the safety of their loved ones. In at two we have Strigoi. Strigoi is a terrifying demon from Romanian mythology and a troubled spirits that are said to have risen from the grave to prey on the living. It is believed that they have the ability to transform into an animal, become invisible and gain vitality from the blood of their victims. Bram Stoker's Dracula has been the modern interpretation of the Strigoi through the historic links with vampirism. One of the earliest members of historical Strigoi was Giorgrando Alilovic from the region of Istria. This village 
Villager was believed to be the first real person to be labelled as a vampire because he was referred to as a Strigoi. Drew is said to have terrorised his former village for 16 years after his death. Eventually he was decapitated by the local priests and villagers to let the terror subside. Johann Weikard von Valvesor wrote about Jur's life and afterlife in his extensive work The Glory of the Duchy of Carnoyla when he visited Kringer during his travels. This was the first written document on vampires in relation to the demon Strigoi. An 1865 article in Transylvanian Folklore by Wilhelm Schmidt describes Strigoi as nocturnal creatures that prey on infants and haunts the nearby villagers, stalking women waiting for them to give birth so they can sneak into their home and steal their babies. In 1909, writer Franz Harman mentioned this demon in a book, saying that the peasant children from a village in the Carpathian Mountains started to pass away mysteriously. The villagers began to suspect their recently deceased count turned bloodthirsty demon was the one causing these mysterious deaths. A common way used to identify the Strigoi was to place a young child dressed in white on a white horse near the graveyard at midday. It was believed that the horse would stop at the grave of the suspected demon. And finally, in and one we have Kulm King. One of the scariest demons from Europe is that of the Kulm King. This creature comes from Estonian mythology and is the evil protector of the forest, eating children alive when they bother forest spirits. Not only do they prey on children, but they terrorise anyone that comes in contact with them, being able to possess people, turning them into devils and causing havoc as lesser personifications of evil. They like to haunt and terrorise grown ups who happen to cross paths with it while walking the dark forest around Europe. It is the restless ghost of an unholy dead and you run the risk of being harassed every everywhere in the wild because the Com King doesn't have a fixed haunting place. To make it even worse, many believe this creature has the ability to go through the body of humans, and if this happens that person becomes evil, thus creating a legion of killers. This terrifying demon can appear in many different forms including a dog, a cat and a haystack. Some of the more sinister and possibly accurate descriptions of the Com King are they look like a demonic polar bear, white sharp spikes running down their backs and sharp teeth and claws that cause death immediately. Yes, this demon is a protector of the forest, but to us humans it is similar to the devil and takes no prisoners. If you're venturing in the forest, I would be very careful to not encounter this creature, and if you do, be respectful of the forest and its habitat if you don't want to escape alive. Not only does this demon frequent public places, but can also enter private places without invitation, a trait that can be found in other folklore monsters, such as vampires and certain types of ghosts. Anyone who enters the woods in Eastern Europe worries if the Com King could be lurking nearby. And coming in number 5, the Pacetto Family Possession. During the year of 1981, home in Lee, Massachusetts was riddled by paranormal activity that surged through every room in this house. Lee and Dale Pacetto, an average hardworking American couple, along with their two children, endured occurrences that nearly destroyed them, literally. The devout Catholics lived peacefully in the house that had been their family home for decades. It wasn't until two years after moving in that the demonic signs started showing. On March 19th, Mrs. Pacetto began receiving nightly visits from a white orb that took the shape of a non-threatening young boy who spoke in a very soft voice. Doesn't sound that bad. While the apparition was gentle, the Pacettos felt that they should rid their home of such supernatural entity and a priest eventually came in to perform a ritual. Mr. and Mrs. Pacetto believed their troubles were over after this, but unfortunately Unfortunately, this only caused more demonic occurrences to start. In place of this sweet ghost boy grew an unearthly creature hunched over and dressed in a black robe. Scary. Mrs. Pacetto claimed that the spectre would say vulgar and nasty things, growling, saying it called itself the Minister of God. It wasn't just the verbal attacks that were happening, however, no. During the sleepless nights, Mrs. Pacetto claimed that she suffered claw marks both on her back, stomach, breasts and face after being dragged around the bedroom. Mr. Pacetto attested this and said that he watched in horror as the bed levitated above him, Mrs. Pacetto on it. Terrifying, dude. Refrigerators were ripped from walls, metal bookcases turned over to the floor, and in one case, a crucifix was even yanked from the hand of their 14-year-old son. The Pacettos reached out to medical professionals for help, but they rejected their experiences, calling them exaggerated. It wasn't until Mr. and Mrs. Pacetto turned to professionals Ed and Lorraine Warren, self-proclaimed demonologists, that were called to help. The Ghostbusters themselves. As the founders of the New England Society for Psychic Research in the 50s, Mr. and Mrs. Warren devoted their life to the supernatural. When the Warrens visited the the Pacettos, they instantly detected signs of paranormal activity pulsing from the home. In a description eerily similar to the film Poltergeist, which came out the following summer in 82, Mrs. Warren says that she saw many small ghost lights move around the room until they combined to create a towering shadowy figure. A priest was brought in to perform the ritual. The basement apparently then filled with smoke during the exorcism, and when the ritual was complete, 
the Warrens deemed the house clear of evil. The Passetto family moved back in and reported no further activity since. And in 2004, the family moved out and on and left this once haunted house for someone else to deal with. I understand. Number four, Elizabeth Knapp. The possession of Elizabeth Knapp, October 30th, 1671 to January 12th, 1672, is a unique and weird one in the aspect that it was approached from a more scientific aspect than religious, and being of that time, somewhat of a new methodology. Knapp's father was the servant at a household of Samuel Willard, a prominent reverend in the Church of Groton. When Elizabeth Knapp, a member of his own household, began to show signs of demonic possession, Willard took a carefully and yet scientific approach to the situation, which was rare for the 17th century Puritan. After these scary events took place, they could provide no explanation for her episodic fits. He declared that it was a case of possession. Throughout the entire process, he notes in his journal, Knapp seemed to have most violent fits when Willard was present beside her. Willard states that Knapp at first began to complain of pains in her body. She would grab certain parts of her body such as her legs or breasts and would scream out talking about feelings of strangulation. She would even sometimes laugh to the point of hysterical fits weeping or screaming out. Hallucinations followed shortly after the outbursts, and on many occasions she claimed to see two people constantly walking around her bed. Strange claims like this constantly seeing men floating above her bed as well. This happened particularly at night, including some convulsings on the ground. Willard then documented on the night of November 2nd, 1671, Knapp made a confession of meeting up with the devil. Uh oh. The old sign at the crossroads deal, huh? She stated that for three years the devil had been meeting her, promising her money, youth, and the ability to see the world. She then claimed that he had presented her with a book of blood covenant, which was signed by other women as well. And on the night of November 28th, in which she had a fit lasting for 48 hours straight, she was in a coma state until she made the pact with the devil himself. Witnesses document strange deep voices and animal sounds coming from her. After Willard stopped entries to his journal, things get a little messy. It has been a historical mystery what happened to Knapp, as we are still unsure to this day exactly what remains of her. Was she tried and hanged for witchcraft, or simply disappeared on the promise of seeing the world? You tell me. Number three on this list is the Changeling. This demon, or demons in this case, is very strange in the way that they can attack. Typically their targets are mothers of newborn babies, or the babies themselves. It all started from an ancient legend in Germany where the mother of a newborn baby realized her child would not grow or gain weight. Both of the parents were very worried and looked for ways to help. They heard of this magical spring where, if they dunk their baby in it, it will either heal their child or their child will die within 9 days. Considering their child would die anyways if its growth was continued to be stunted, they really had no other choice than to try the water and hope that it healed their baby. The mother left with her child, but while she was walking to the spring, her child on her back grew heavy. She turned around to look at it, but it was no longer her baby. Where her child once was was a grotesque demon creature that resembles nothing from this planet. She panicked and threw the demon thing into the water she was nearby. At that at that point, she thought that her baby was dead, that she had inadvertently killed her child by throwing that possessive demon into the water below. But when she returned home, she found her child happy and healthy with its ailment cured. So in all honesty, I don't really understand how this demon operates. How is it possible for her baby to have been with her, then change into a demon, but then reappear with no demon at her home? It's possible that maybe this demon creature can assume the form of newborn children, and that's what happened here. Maybe the creature assumed the form of her child, tricked her into bringing it with her on her journey, but before it could attack, was found out. Comment down below your thoughts on the changeling and how it actually operates. Moral of the story though, if your kid turns into a grotesque beast thing, then there's probably something wrong with it. Number two on this list is Lorelei. Lorelei isn't your typical scary looking dark demon. This creature is far more cunning and hides her hand for as long as possible before she strikes. Culture Trip says, according to German folklore, atop a steep rock on the Rhine River, there once lived an exquisite nymph named Lorelei. She dressed in white and wore a wreath of stars in her hair. Not only was her physical beauty astounding, but the siren sang a song so haunting and hypnotizing that no sailor could resist her aura. Enticed by her song, legend has it that no sailor who tried to reach Lorelei ever returned. Instead, they 
they would meet their final fate by crashing against the dangerous rocks. Today, a statue of Lorelei watches over the treacherous stretch of water near Sank Gorhausen. So many lives have been lost to this alluring call that Lorelai makes. Why she is doing this, what caused her to be there, or if she even is an actual demon are all questions that we don't know. I tend to think that anybody who sings to people hypnotizing them and then murdering them falls into the demon category though, but I truthfully don't know her exact origins. It's also hard to get an exact description of what she looks like as nobody has really been able to see her up close and lived. Just know that if you hear some mysterious Serious melodic singing when you're in Germany, don't go near it. And finally, number one on this list is the Marksman Demon. This is one of the most famous stories in German folklore and involves the literal devil himself. Fluent U writes, A master marksman finds himself unable to catch any wild swine or deer in the dark autumn forests. One day, he's approached by a mysterious peddler wrapped in a cloak that conceals his face. The peddler offers the marksman seven bullets with one condition. The first six bullets will hit whatever the marksman wants them to hit. Hit, but the peddler will choose the trajectory of the seventh. The marksman agrees. The marksman quickly earns himself a reputation as the best hunter in the village as he brings home wild boar after wild boar. He catches the eye of the prettiest girl in town and they fall in love. But all too soon, the marksman uses up all his six bullets and when he shoots the seventh, it goes astray and hits his love in the chest killing her. The peddler appears to the distraught marksman and reveals himself as the devil. Live a pious life, repent of your hubris, and you will be reunited with the girl after your death, the devil tells the marksman. The marksman tries, but he is overcome by desire for another girl in the village, and he marries her instead. One year to the day after his bullet pierced his original lover's chest, he is riding in the forest when he comes across a clearing where skeletons dance around cold flames. One of the skeletons the girls, waltzes with him all night, and the next morning the villagers find the marksman and his horse dead at the edge of the forest. I'm not sure what my guy was thinking by accepting those initial six bullets, guys. Also, how on earth could he think it would be a good idea to use them on deer? Like, you'd think that if you got a bunch of magical bullets that will hit literally any target, you save that stuff for things like demons or even the devil himself. Or just shoot five of your six magical bullets and then you never need to fire the seventh deadly one. I don't know guys, I feel bad that the devil decided to pick on him, but I think that my dude could have played his cards a little bit differently in this one. Anyways, at least we know for sure that the devil can in fact be found in Germany. Number 5 on this list is La Madremonte. According to myths and legends of Colombia, La Madremonte is a legend in which a woman who wears moss leaves in a green hat that conceals her face. She lives in the dense jungle and supposedly bathes in rivers, causing flooding and heavy storms. Matramonte haunts those who steals other people's land and casts plagues on cattle owners who ignore boundaries and take advantage of others. She also dislikes unfaithful spouses, vagabonds, and general mischief makers and punishes them by placing insurmountable obstacles in their path when they walk through the jungle. They eventually fall asleep with exhaustion and do not wake for hours. I think what's especially dangerous about this demon is her ability to control the weather the way that she does. It's said that even if you happen to be walking throughout the jungle or forested areas and you happen to get close to where she lives, then she'll use her powers to change the weather and make it extremely dangerous for you. This has caused some people to die before and wrecked even people's homes. For the most part, she'll target people who have wronged somebody else before, and even though this isn't right, it at least means that you can protect yourself by not wronging somebody else. However, to just be walking and accidentally run into her home and then get swept up in a horrible lightning storm definitely isn't cool. Be very careful of this demon witch in the woods if you happen to be around the area. Number 4 on this list is El Chupicabra. One of the most famous urban legends in the area, El Chupicabra, is probably one that you've heard of before. Now this demonic creature is most commonly associated with Puerto Rico. It has, as time gone on, been spotted more and more frequently in parts of South America though, like Chile. 
Wikipedia says, the chupicabra or chupicabras, literally goat sucker from Spanish, chupa to suck and cabras goats, is a legendary creature in the folklore of parts of the Americas with its first purported sightings reported in Puerto Rico in 1995. The name comes from the animal's reported vampirism. The chupacabra is said to attack and drink the blood of livestock, including goats. Physical descriptions of the creature vary, with some describing it as more dog-like, while others describe it as a reptilian and alien-like thing. Some report it as being a heavy creature the size of a small bear, with a row of spines reaching from the neck to the base of the tail. Now, after some extensive research on this creature, I couldn't actually find any reported attacks on humans. So, it seems that this bloodthirsty villain is truly only interested in animals. That being said, there were some instances where people had seen this creature, tried to stop it, and it looked as if it was preparing to attack them. Like most vicious animals, it's probably most interested in its food, but it's going to defend itself to the last ounce of its energy if it has to. Therefore, El Chupicabra is truly only super dangerous to farmers of livestock. If you happen to be a farmer of said livestock, then having some sort of mechanism to keep out this vampiric demon lizard is of critical importance or else it will completely decimate your animals. It's definitely better that you invest in some serious fencing because trying to stop it by yourself, it could prove very dangerous. Number three, like father, like son. Duxbury, Massachusetts, 2021, huh? A 19 year old man is charged in the death of his father. Apparently the boy told police that he was baptizing his father at a Massachusetts pond to exercise out his demons. Okay, modern times call for modern solutions, I guess. And this one, a modern weird one. Jack Callahan, the 19 year old kid choked back tears in court as he listened to prosecutors describe the moment divers pulled the bloated body of his father, 57 year old Scott Callahan, from a Massachusetts pond lifeless. The young man told investigators that he and his father went to the pond around midnight after he picked up his father from a Boston bar. He says that his mother did not want the intoxicated ex-husband of the family home that night as he had been acting somewhat strange lately. After conversations from the son and father, Jack, feeling helpless and confused about his situation, tried to take matters into his own hands. He is now facing a murder charge in relation to his father's death and is still under investigation. Both the prosecution and defense say Scott Callahan had a long history of substance since abuse and suffer from the aftermath of traumatic brain injuries and that from overuse of medicinal drugs might have taken the man's mind. According to Jack at the Pond, his father became combative with him, punched him repeatedly in the face, claiming that he had not been in control of his own body and was assured that his father wasn't really aware of what he was doing in the moment. The 19 year old then decided to baptize his father in an attempt to exorcise the demon, which resulted in drowning him. That's a hard one to swallow. And it's also got some biblical feel to it, you know? Father, son, bonding over paranoia. Scott Callahan was found in the water about 50 feet away from the shore in the pond. Short time after the baptism and attempted exorcism happened, he was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. There is an open investigation on this one still and the young man is sticking to his story. What do you think? Possession? Number two, Warren, Massachusetts. This New England tragedy was apparently what laid out the structure of the Conjuring movies. I'm terrified just reading that, and I guess we're gonna find out why. 11 year old David Glatzel was only 10 when he reported beginning having hallucinations and delusions. From around 79 to 82, the boy's suffering worsened, causing severe trauma in the family. According to his family, efforts by Catholic priests and others to relieve the boy of what they said were multiple demonic possessions. Multiple. Things started getting interesting, however, surrounding the family after an aggressive, bloody confrontation in 1981. Arne Johnson, boyfriend of David's older sister, Deborah, stabbed his landlord to death multiple times in Brookfield. New England paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren later claimed that Johnson had actually challenged the demon inside David's body to leave the young boy and enter him instead. This guy's a hero, man. Unfortunately, a deadly one at that. That argument was the basis of the devil made me do it defense at Johnson's trial in Danbury with the superior court. The Warrens claimed that the man showed all signs of possession, including growling, speaking in strange voices, violent acts, and talkings of the beast. This is a wild case and sparked huge controversy in court after murder charges were forever changed with the claim that the devil made me do it 
would be lawfully excused. He was released from prison in 1985. And coming in at number one, the Dover Demon. Probably the most famous of all these cases. 17 year old William Bartlett claimed that while driving on April 21st, 1977, he saw a large eyed creature with huge sharp fingers and glowing eyes on top of a broken stone wall on Farm Street in Dover, Massachusetts. 15 year old John Baxter reported seeing a similar creature on Miller Hill Road the same evening. Another 15 year old, Abby Brabham, claimed to have seen the creature the following night on Springdale Avenue. Three in one night, huh? The teenagers all drew sketches of the alleged creature. Bartlett wrote on his sketch, I, Bill Bartlett, swear on a stack of Bibles that I saw this creature. And according to the Boston Globe, but according to the Boston Globe, some suggest that the creature may have just been a large foal or moose calf. Nah, definitely not. With wings and fingers like that? I don't think so. Police told the Associated Press that creatures reported by the teenagers were probably nothing more than a school vacation hoax. I don't know. It's been about 45 years since the sightings of the creature that came to be known as the Dover Demon and still remains one of Massachusetts' truly great mysteries and one of the world's great cryptic cases. Number five, the invisible guest. Our first clip today was posted to Reddit and it's a delightfully strange one. It's CCTV footage of a security guard working in Buenos Aires at a hospital late at night around 3 a.m. Now, traditionally, that's kind of like the witching hour, but like no big deal or anything. Anyway, take a quick little look at the clip for us. We can see the security guard get up from his desk, clipboard in hand, opening the belt, even going so far as bringing in a wheelchair for this guest who doesn't appear to exist, at least not physically. Watch this clip as many times as you'd like, you'll never see who he's letting in because they just don't seem to exist at all. It's unsettling to say the least. Now let's put on our rational caps and take a look at this. Let's give a little scully approach. This could just be an extremely bored security guard working the graveyard shift at a hospital doing anything to make himself entertained. I've worked long night shifts by myself and let me tell you, I would do stupid stuff like this all the time just to keep myself entertained. Now the molder approach, and that's why we're here, is that this could be any number of supernatural things. A ghost? Some sort of demonic entity possessing the security guard and making him open the door. It's the way the guard does it also routinely, as if he doesn't even realize anything is wrong or you know nobody's there that makes it so unsettling. And I, I think that's the word for this clip. It's, it's unsettling, it's hard to describe. The clip went fairly viral for its bizarre nature and the hospital clarified that the guard never registered a patient to enter. So either it was a prank or the demon just didn't have enough ID on it and just waltzed on in. So let me know what you all think. Is this a bored prankster or something supernatural piercing the veil? And if you're looking for a lot more strange security footage, cryptids, creatures, tales of the unknown or tales of the very known, Top 5 Scary has all of that and then some in spades. We've got just about everything scary you could possibly think of. So click on through, subscribe if you'd like, but stay watching this video, okay? Because we got way more scary stuff coming up for you in just a second. Number four, a gnome. Our next clip looks like something out of the start of a low budget like A24 horror movie. I started watching this clip and I thought it was kind of boring and then as soon as it got going, I literally pressed my nose to the computer screen. So I hope you do the same. This clip was posted to the subreddit Humanoid Encounters and explained that this had happened to their relatives and they don't really know what's going on. But what we can see in the clip is bizarre. Someone is outside on their front porch, shining a light into the darkness, trying to find what is stalking them on their property. It can be a little hard to see, but behind this big rock, we see what looks like tiny little hands peering out, trying not to be seen, playing a spectral game of hide and seek. It's really difficult to figure out what's going on in this clip. We only have this flashlight helping us out here, but it almost seems too like there may be more than one of these creepy little crawlies running around back there. The OP who posted the clip originally suggested that these creatures are are indigenous folklore of little people, which interestingly is a myth that's surprisingly common across the globe with cultures in Ireland, Greece, the Philippines, New Zealand, and Indonesia to name a few, all having local legends about little people or gnomes or elves or things like that creeping in the night. Don't you worry, oh, that'll come up more later. 
Now, scully mode for a second. This could extremely easily be someone's kids being told to play along for a prank, get some views, or even someone just hiding behind a rock, playing with a doll, poking it out. The only evidence we have against this really is that the clip looks weird, and OP's word that they swear this is a close family member and wouldn't do this sort of thing. And going through the YouTube channel, you can see it's mostly just family videos, so it does make sense. So what do we think, YouTube comments? Little people creeping around, or is this a tall tale? As like a height pun. I don't know if, if everybody picked up on that. It's, it's pretty smart. Number three on this list is the Encantados. The Encantados are a group of multiple demon creatures that reside underwater. They are extremely dangerous and have reportedly been responsible for several human disappearances. The thing about Encantados is that they're very curious about humans and you may have no idea that you're dealing with one for a long time. Mental Floss says, the Encantado is a dolphin, but one with evil powers. Encantado means enchanted one in Portuguese and refers to a special kind of boto or long-beaked river dolphin native to the Amazon that can take human form. Encantados are curious about humans and are especially attracted to big, noisy festivals which they often attend as musicians staying in human form for years. How can you recognize one? Look under its hat. They always have bald spots that are actually disguised blowholes. Encantados are usually friendly, but they occasionally hypnotize and kidnap young women and take them back to the Encante, their underground city. Sometimes the women escape and return pregnant with an Encantado baby. So they seem really nice and good right up until they decide to kidnap you and take you to their underground city where any number of things could happen. Most of the people who are taken there never return and as they said, the ones that do have another passenger coming along for the ride. The origin of Encantados are not 100% confirmed, but it seems that many people think that it was a small village that was cursed to live underwater for a long, long time. Now they reside there except for the few times that they take the surface disguised as humans to see what we're up to and to take a few of us back to their evil lair. Number two on this list is El Cibon. El Cibon, also known as the Whistler, is a demon that doesn't get talked about nearly enough. This is a mistake though, and frankly, we need to be talking and educating more about this demon and how dangerous it can be. The Spanish language blog says, according to a legend often told in the rural parts of Venezuela, El Cibon is the last soul of a young man who one day killed his own father in revenge because he murdered his son's girlfriend as he didn't approve of their relationship. After he killed his father, the young man's grandfather took it upon himself to punish him by tying him to a tree and beating him with a whip until he bled. Then he condemned him to carry his father's remains in a sack on his back. As the boy walked away into the plains, his grandfather yelled at him, you shall not do that to your father, you are damned for all eternity, and then set his rabid dogs after him. It's said that the boy's spirit brings death and destruction to anyone who comes across him. His ghost is described as an extremely tall and skinny man who wears a farming hat and whistles the notes, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. He's very tricky while deceiving his victims. When his whistling is heard up close, he's actually far away. But when he's heard from afar, you better start running because he's actually nearby. So, first off, that initial family is freaking messed up, dude. Your dad kills your girlfriend, so then you kill your dad, but then your grandfather beats you, forces you to carry around your dead dad, and then sends dogs after you. Like, what the heck? Aside from the family being absolutely bonkers, this demon is also kinda nuts as well. I get serious Batman Joker vibes from the creepy whistle that he does there to indicate that he's coming to get his victims. The way he kills his victims is said to be very graphic as well, and he won't have you die slowly. It will be a long and drawn out process of torture that will have you begging for death. Nobody really knows how to defend yourself against this demon either. Fighting it one on one just simply won't work and you're gonna lose. You just need to pay very close attention to the whistle and if you do ever hear it, don't second guess anything, just take off and don't look back. Hope that he loses interest in you and moves on to something else. Just a terrifying demon who you need to avoid at all costs. 
And finally, number one on this list is Saint La Merte. So, Saint La Merte is one of the most famous on this list, and I can promise you that you definitely do not want to run into this one. Saint La Merte is your typical personification of death in South America. It is a male figure that's dressed in a hooded cloak holding a very sharp and very menacing scythe that is sometimes referred to as Saint Death. Saint Death, or just Death if you will, brings one thing alone and it's not a welcome gift. No, as you would expect, it's Death. And this demonic personification of Death is said to be pretty inherently evil as well. There are many followers that look up to Saint Death and praise him. The biggest following for him is in Argentina and the country surrounding Argentina. Saint Death is said to reward his followers by helping them on their evil ventures. Let's say that you're a dangerous murderer, but you're also a strong supporter of Saint Death. Well, if Saint Death likes you, then he'll use his powers that he has to have you evade the law or even assist you in killing people. He grants numerous requests that are all connected to crime and violence and is basically the guardian angel for the evil criminals of the world. Saint La Merte also acknowledges those who do not devote a part of their lives to him and it's not the type of acknowledgement that you'd want. He will often kill those who disrespect him and don't support him. This is part of the reason why he has such a strong and stable following and many people are constantly praising him and his abilities. If you ever see this demon confront you, then there's most likely nothing you can do at all. That will be the last thing that you ever see and your last moment ever spent on Earth. Number five, a gnome? Is a gnome a demon? I don't know, I find most gnomes benevolent, actually, but they could be. Our next clip looks like something out of the start of a low budget horror movie, bit of an A24 vibe. I started watching this clip and then as soon as it got going, I literally pressed my nose to my computer screen, so I hope you do the same. The clip was posted to the subreddit r slash humanoid encounters. I definitely recommend it if you're into this sort of thing. There's a lot of really good humanoid encounters on there. And the poster explained that this has happened to their relatives, but they don't know what's going on. What we can see in the clip is bizarre. Someone is outside on their front porch, shining a light into the darkness, trying to find what is stalking them on their property. It can be a little hard to see, but behind the big rock, we see what looks like teeny tiny little hands peering out trying not to be seen playing a little game and know me hide and seek now it can be hard to make out what exactly is going on in this clip but it almost seems to like there might be more than one of those little creepy crawlers wiggling around back there now the original poster suggested that these creatures are indigenous folklore of little people which I think this is pretty interesting is a myth that is almost ubiquitous across the globe pretty much every peoples you know Ireland Greece the Philippines New Zealand Indonesia and and so many more all all have stories of gnomes or elves or little mischievous people creeping about in the night. I just find it interesting that the whole planet all has that myth. Are they all wrong or are gnomes real? Now let's put on our scully hat for a second, get a little uh, dowdy. This could extremely easily be somebody playing along for a prank or someone just hiding behind a rock, playing with a doll, poking it out. The only evidence we have that this is a gnome is OP's word that they swear this is a close family member and they wouldn't do this sort of thing. And you can go through the YouTube channel, you see it's mostly just family videos, so that does make sense. So I toss it over to you, my beloved YouTube commenter gang. You guys keep me young, I love those comments. Little people creeping around, or is this just a tall tale? Hoof. I spent all night working on that pun. And if you're looking for more videos of ghosts and goblins and gnomes with this guy talking over them, I've got lots of that for you on our channel. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any of it. Make sure you ring that bell so you doubly don't miss any of it. But if you really cared about me, no, I'm not saying you do. You do it at the end of this video so you can watch all the other demons caught on camera first because I got four more coming. Number four, Dogman. Coming up next is this clip that was making the rounds around the spookier side of the internet of an Instagram user going live. The user was complaining that he'd seen something strange earlier in the day referring to a dog man that he thought he had seen. Now that is different from a werewolf. A dog man is a fairly popular cryptid that gets mentioned every now and again, kind of like a goat man or a moth man deal. It's like a bipedal wolf, but it's not a werewolf, okay? If you think it's a werewolf, that's a different thing. Anyway, this guy was talking on live and heard something strange outside and went to go check. 
Let's go with him and let's go watch the clip. Now we can roll it again if you didn't see it, but at around a minute into the clip, when the user going live hears something strange and goes in to check on what it was, we see something rush by if only for a second that does not look like it's from this world at all. Looks like a tall creature running by on its hind legs. And I know it does give off a werewolfy vibe. I get it. It looks like a werewolf. I get it. But it's a dog man. It's totally different. I, I don't have the time to explain the difference, but a dog man and a werewolf are totally different. Now, here's the thing either this video is one of the best fakes I've ever seen, and I watch a ton of supernatural videos, so I like to think I got an eye for it. It's got a great budget, an actor who really knows how to sell a scare, or this is something that actually happened to a real terrified guy. It being on Instagram Live gives it a little bit more credibility, you know? It's harder to fake things in camera on live. It doesn't really seem like someone in a costume. It just looks like it was a dog man caught on camera. Okay, so realist, scully mode. I don't know. I don't know if I have one. Molder mode, that's a dog man. That's a dog man all the way down. Why don't you all let me know down below what we think is going on down there. And also, if you have some insight on the werewolf dog man debate, lend a hand. I'm fighting a losing battle here. Number three, creature prowling. This next clip was originally posted to TikTok and then made its way over to the subreddit High Strangeness, which I definitely recommend if you're looking for a little weird stuff in your day to day. Extremely fitting title because I don't think there's anywhere else this could have been posted. The footage comes to us from the Philippines and was seen late at night by a group of friends walking home. You ready for it? Here you go. So as you could probably see in the clip, there is something horrifying prowling around on top of this roof. It certainly looks human, but looking human is an easy trick, although this creature doesn't seem like it has that one down 100% just yet. It needs a little work on its human impression. The eyes are glowing, peering out at you. The, the eye shining is what really gets me about this clip. It's very creepy. Reminds me more of a cat or a dog's eyes when being recorded in the night than does any human. Could this possibly be a skinwalker mid-transformation that's been caught attempting to disguise itself? It definitely fits the bill of a creature walking like an animal but looks like a human. It almost looks too like it's sussing out its options, waiting for the right moment to pounce down. Now, let's get rational, get our scully hat on. The most likely, if not uncomfortable possibility is that this could just be someone under the influence of one or all of the substances who's having a really bad night. However, it could also be something paranormal, supernatural, creeping around caught on camera, imitating a human being. Is this someone wearing the skin of a person or just someone having a night they're not going to remember for a few weeks? You let me know because I could go either way on this one. Number two, a ghost. Coming up next is this clip that was making the rounds of an Instagram user going live. The user was complaining that he had seen something strange earlier in the day. He had mentioned that he had seen what he believed to be a dog man that he thought he saw, a fairly popular cryptid that gets mentioned every now and again and has been kind of picking up in uh, popularity lately. He was talking on the live and then happened to hear something strange outside, so naturally he went to go look and the results were horrifying. Let's watch the clip. Did you see it? Well, we can roll it again if you didn't. At around a minute into the clip, when the user was going live, he hears something strange and goes in to check on what it was. And we see something rush by, if only for a second, that doesn't look like it came from this world even a little bit. It looks like a tall creature running by on its hind legs, and I'm gonna be honest, I immediately thought it was a werewolf. It kinda has that werewolfy vibe. Here's the thing about this one. Either this video is one of the best fakes I have ever seen with a fantastic creature effects budget and some real impressive practical effect wizardry. And it's got an actor who really knows how to sell being scared or this is actually something that happened to a real terrified guy and we caught his reaction live. I think it being on Instagram live lends a little bit of credibility, I think, since it makes these things a lot harder to fake when you have to do it live. Ask any stage production. The thing doesn't seem like it's someone in a costume either. The, the silhouette looks all wrong. It really just does look like it was a werewolf caught on tape. Scully mode. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I don't know if I have one. Molder mode. That is a werewolf. I, <laughs> full stop. That's a real werewolf. Why don't you all let me know down below in the comments what we think that might be down there, but that's a werewolf. I don't know if you're gonna be able to convince me otherwise. And number one, the Costa Rica creature. 
Now I spent a long time looking at some weird CCTV footage, door cam, blurry cell phone footage, trying to find something just weird and freaky to show you all for this video and well, I think I've saved the best for last here. This footage was captured from a ring light security camera and it's maybe one of the scariest things I've seen in a hot minute. Now you take a little look-see for me and I don't blame you at all if you need to scroll down to hide in the comments, it's safe there. <laughs> Huh? What did I tell you? Pretty weird clip. We can see a dog barking repeatedly at something outside. And at first I rolled my eyes because I thought, hey, this isn't anything supernatural. This is just two dogs barking at each other. Until I watched the clip over again and I realized what the dog was barking at is absolutely not a dog breed from this planet. No, we see something absolutely horrifying crawling around looking like a spider, like it just came out of dead space. The way the dog is barking really makes me stress too. It's not just barking at something odd, it is freaking out and shrieking and screaming and it seems panicked and scared and trying to let everyone in the neighborhood know that something deeply evil is around. This is one of those things where I look at it and rationally I want to say that this is just someone messing around, having fun, doing something for views, trying to get viral on TikTok. I'm having trouble being rational here. I just fully believe this might actually be a demonic entity that someone caught on camera and personally I am extremely glad it is absolutely nowhere near me. Now if you need me, I need to go watch some videos of like, I don't know, cats being funny or something. Can we throw maybe a cat or two up at the end? 